The ML4000 Mastering Limiter by MIG-DSP is a high-resolution limiter and multi-band dynamics processor designed for music production, mastering, post, and live sound. The ML4000 is made up of two plugins, the ML1 and the ML4. The ML1 is a mastering limiter that utilizes a flexible brick wall look-ahead design coupled with multiple stages of limiting for superior peak detection. It includes standard limiter controls such as threshold and ceiling knobs, along with input, output, and gain reduction meters. It also features some less common limiter controls such as knee, release, and limiter mode parameters. The patented ML1 algorithm delivers a great sound with extremely low latency. The ML4 is a multi-band dynamics processor that includes a four-band gate, upwards or downwards expander, and compressor, all fed into the same mastering limiter found in the ML1. Each band is separated by modifiable 24 dB per octave crossover filters. In addition to full control of all gate, expander, and compression functions, bands can be linked, soloed, and individually enabled or bypassed. Comprehensive metering for band input, output, and all gate, expander, and compressor gain reduction is also available. The ML4000 provides outstanding results with an intuitive user interface, flexible design, and powerful set of algorithms. Let's check it out in more detail and then hear what it has to offer. Starting at the top are the ceiling and threshold knobs. Ceiling designates the maximum output signal level, as high as 0 dB or as low as negative 36 dB, and it can be adjusted via its knob or via the orange triangle to the right of the output meter. Threshold sets the signal level at which the limiter begins to detect input signal peaks, and like the ceiling control, it can be set between negative 36 dB and 0 dB via its knob or via the orange triangle to the left of the input knob. The final two knobs on the ML1 are the knee and release knobs. Knee is a unique continuous control that controls the limiting action transition with extreme precision. A hard knee can be set with lower values, while a soft knee can be set with higher values. Release sets the rate at which the limiter recovers from reducing a signal peak, and it can be set as fast as one millisecond to as slow as five seconds. Like the knee control, the release control is continuous, allowing for extreme flexibility. Note that all four of these knobs can also be set to specific numerical values by clicking and typing in the knob's corresponding text readout in the middle of the UI. Below the text readouts for the ML1's knobs is the mode selector. Clicking the name of the currently selected mode brings up a menu with six modes to choose from. Each limiting mode defines the type of secondary detection used to create various limiting styles to suit a variety of input signals and applications. When used in conjunction with different release values, the ML1 limiter modes bring a wealth of tonal variety to the table. The last features on the ML1's UI are the input, output, and gain reduction meters found on the left side of the UI. The leftmost meter is the input meter, the rightmost meter is the output meter, and the orange meter between the two is the gain reduction meter. Peak values for the input and output meters can be found above them. Now on to the other ML4000 plugin, the ML4. As previously mentioned, the ML4 comes loaded with all the same features from the ML1, while also adding quite a few more capabilities into the mix, no pun intended. It does this with the help of two different selectable tabs listed at the top of the plugin's UI, main and crossover. Let's start with the controls that affect the overall behavior of the plugin in the main tab. The ML4's most notable features are its four bands of multi-band gating, upwards or downwards expansion, and compression. The main set of controls for each of them can be found towards the bottom of the ML4's UI. Each of these controls can be modified via their respective sliders, or by clicking their values text readout and typing in a value directly. By default, controls for each band's gate are shown. To view the expansion or compression controls for each band, simply click the corresponding EXP or COMP button on the bottom of any band. To the left of each of these buttons is a smaller rectangular button. Click this to bypass or engage a particular type of processing for a particular band. To globally bypass or engage any type of processing in the ML4, use the buttons underneath the master limiter's knobs to the lower left side of the multiband control section. Each crossover point, labeled X1, X2, and X3, can be adjusted by either clicking and dragging the number in the text readout in any direction, or by clicking the text readout and typing in a value directly. 
Now let's get into more detail on the controls available on each individual band, starting with each band's gate. First up in the ML4's gate is the threshold control. It sets the signal level below which input signal level is attenuated by the range amount, both of which can be dialed in between negative 80 dB and 0 dB. To control the gate's envelope, use the hold, attack, and release controls. Hold sets the amount of time the gate remains open once the signal level exceeds the threshold, and it can be set between 2 milliseconds and 2 seconds. Attack is the time it takes for the gate to open once input signal level exceeds the threshold, and the release specifies the rate at which the gate closes once input signal levels are below the threshold. Attack can be dialed between 0.2 and 200 milliseconds, and release can be dialed between 20 milliseconds and 2 seconds. This also goes for the attack and release controls on the ML4's expander and compressor. Now onto the expander section, which is accessible via the EXP tab at the bottom of any band. Many of its parameters are similar to those of each band's gate, while others are new. Threshold sets the level below which input signal level is attenuated or boosted by a maximum amount determined by the range control. When the range control is dialed between 0.1 and 24 dB, the band will act as an upwards expander, but range values between negative 24 and negative 0.1 dB will cause downwards expansion. Further modifications can be made to each band's expander via the ratio, attack, and release controls. Ratio determines the amount of signal attenuation or boosting as a ratio of input and output, and it can be set between 1 to 1 and 20 to 1. The attack control determines the rate at which the expander gain returns to unity once signal levels exceed the threshold, while release specifies the rate at which the expander gain approaches the level set by the range control once input signal levels are below the threshold. The final type of processing available to each band is compression, which can be accessed via the button labeled Comp beneath each band's controls. Its controls are very similar to those of the expander section, but we'll cover them now starting with threshold and ratio. Threshold sets the level above which input signal is attenuated, while ratio determines how much signal level reduction occurs as a ratio of input to output. It can be set between 1 to 1 and 20 to 1. The compressor bands also feature a knee control, which adjusts the transition between no compression and the selected compression ratio. It can be set between 0 and 100, 0 being the hardest knee, and 100 being the softest knee. Lastly, each compressor has an attack and release control. Attack specifies the rate at which compressor gain reduces signal levels exceeding the threshold, while release determines the rate at which the compressor gain approaches unity once input signal levels are below the threshold. Now let's move on to the link feature of the ML4, which allows for adjustments to be made to multiple bands at the same time. To get started with the link feature, locate the M and L buttons to the left of each band's meters. Clicking on a band's M button will designate that band as the master band, while clicking the L button on any other band will link that band's controls to the selected master band. That means that any changes made to the master band will also be reflected across any bands that are linked to it. To make quick and easy broadband adjustments across all bands at once, hold the shift key and then click the M button of the desired master band. This will automatically designate the selected band as the master band, while also linking all other bands to it. The link feature isn't the only thing that makes the ML4 incredibly easy to use. Each band also has a gain fader and a solo button. Gain faders are located to the left of each band's meters, and to the left of that is each band's solo button, which is marked by an S within a circle. The gain faders can be used to modify the level for each individual band after any processing on that band has taken place, i.e. post gate, expander, and compression. It can be adjusted by dragging the fader up or down or by clicking the gain values text readout and typing in a value directly. Additionally, the solo button allows for any band to be heard in solo post-processing. Utilizing this feature is a great way to dial in the ML4's attack and release controls. The final section of the ML4's main tab that we'll be discussing is its plot and metering functionality. To the right of the gain faders, each band features input, output, and gain reduction meters for both expansion and compression. By default, each band's input meter is shown but clicking the in text will convert all meters into output meters. 
Additionally, the peak value of these meters is shown in the text box labeled peak. To the right of the input and output meters are gain reduction meters. The meter labeled C is the gain reduction meter for each band's compressor, while the meter labeled E is the gain reduction meter for each band's expander combined with the gain reduction for each band's gate. Above each set of these meters is a plot view of each band's I.O. curve. This plot updates to give a visual representation of how the controls below it are dialed in. Moving on from the main tab, selecting the tab labeled X over towards the top of the ML4's UI will show the crossover section of the ML4. Most of this tab is made up of the same functionality from the main tab in that individual band controls, crossover points, link and solo buttons, gain faders, and I.O. curves are still visible and modifiable. But the crossover tab is perfect for seeing a more global, visual representation of the ML4's multiband processing. The plot view is in the center of the crossover tab's UI. By default, this plot only shows the crossover points that separate each band. These crossover points can be modified by clicking and dragging them left or right. At the bottom left corner of the plot view are three buttons. Selecting in will show the input level of each band, output will do the same for the output level of each band, and DYN, short for dynamics, shows each band's dynamic processing, combining the gain reduction of the gates, expanders, and compressors. The final feature the crossover tab brings to the table is its RTA, or real-time analyzer. The RTA button at the bottom right corner of the plot view will show or hide a precise representation of the frequency spectrum of the audio signal, post the ML4's processing. Now onto some examples so we can hear what the ML4000's features are capable of. For this first example, we'll check out the ML4 on a master bus. Let's check out how these controls are dialed in. For the multiband section, which comes first in the ML4 signal chain, we have the compressors working on bands 1 and 2 to rein in and control low end and low mids. Then, band 4 is acting as an upwards expander to add a bit of brightness into this mix, and band 3's compressor is engaged to catch any stray peaks. Then on the master limiter, we're using the clean mode, which helps us get that clean, transparent sound that the ML4000 is famous for. We've also dialed in the fastest release and hardest knee to get this mix sounding as loud and powerful as possible. Lastly, the threshold and ceiling controls are dialed in such that the processed version of this track is at about the same volume as the unprocessed version. Before moving on to our next example, let's check out a couple more ML4000 settings that will make this mix stand out. To start off, we've got a setup that has almost all the same settings as our previous one. This time though, the expanders are engaged on bands 1 and 2, to bring back that low end we're attenuating and glue it in place. For this last setting, we've engaged the expander and compressor on all four of the ML4's bands to completely pin every section of the frequency spectrum in place. The gain faders on each band are also being used to balance each band relative to one another. To our next example, which is perfect for demonstrating the ML4000's ability to produce over the top or OTT like processing. Once the plugin is engaged, notice how the high end and low end fill out and make this synth sound much thicker and cohesive.
this example, I've dialed in some OTT lag settings via every band's expander and compressor. All four of these bands are using their expanders to perform aggressive upwards expansion, and their compressors are also engaged to further pin each portion of the frequency spectrum in place. The gain faders on each band are also being used to balance the volume of each band relative to one another. Finally, the master limiter is set to crush mode to push the sound even farther. Let's check out a couple more OTT-like settings that can be dialed in on the ML4. This plugin comes loaded with a variety of OTT presets, so there are plenty more where these came from. Our second to last example is an electric guitar track that has quite a bit of low mid and low end buildup anytime the guitarist plays a palm mute. I'm going to link all bands to band 2 by clicking its M button while holding shift, and then dragging its threshold down while the guitar plays. As I do so, notice how these palm mutes no longer sound too boomy or low end heavy. Not only that, but because every other band's compressor threshold is being brought down, we're also protecting ourselves from stray peaks that pop out from the tone too much. Let's have a listen. For our final example, let's use every type of processing included within the ML4 to bring life to a drum bus. In this case, bands 1 and 2 are doing quite a bit of work to thicken up the kick and snare in this drum bus. Their expanders are performing upwards expansion to bring out the low and low mid portions of the frequency spectrum, while their compressors are dialed in to slightly attenuate those frequencies to keep them in check. Additionally, to keep the low end from getting too out of control, the ML4's gates are being used to shape the envelope of the low end exactly how we want. Slight amounts of compression and upwards expansion are also being done on bands 3 and 4, and the master limiter is set to crush mode. Let's hear a couple different ways we could dial in the ML4 to hear even more of its tonal variety. Bringing life to a synth sound, to mastering a mix, and everything in between, the ML4000 Mastering Limiter plugin by MickDSP has everything you need for your music production, mastering, post, and live sound needs. Interested in learning more? Try out the ML4000 free 14-day trial at the link in the description. It can be purchased on its own, and it is also included in the All Access subscription, as well as the Everything Pack, Emerald Pack, and Live Pack 2 plugin bundles. We've linked all of these options in the description as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more MCDSP tips and content. Also, feel free to use the links in the description to follow us on other social media platforms. We will see you next time.